Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little bit of a while, but um, I'm excited to share this one with you. And it's an NWA theme. They said they really liked this piece of mine, which was one of the most original pieces that I've ever made. Be on some Dunk High. They've given me a little bit of brief. They wanted um, black, white, red, but they're open to other colors. Five portraits, so all the NWA members. Easy Ice Cube, DJ Yella, Dr. Dre, and MC Ren. They wanted me to reference straight out of Compton and of course fuck the police has to be on there so i've started on the mock-up it's been maybe like a few days i've been playing around with it i'm going to show you how the rest of this mock-up turns out once i finished so the idea for this pair is to have them look like two small building dioramas and then have loads of references to the group's history and their portraits graffitied on top it's sitting on my arm <laughs> i can't work i think the mock-up's done Rather than me explaining every single little detail now, I thought it'd be best if I did it as I was working. So if you want to pause and have a closer look, then please feel free, but I'll explain everything as I'm working. First things first, I'm going to prep them. Even though these shoes aren't going to be worn, it just promotes better bondage with the dye and the paint. And it gives me peace of mind that I know it's going to hold up over time. Rather than trying to paint the base layer, I usually find that dye gives you a much more even coverage and it has some really cool textures that you can bring out later, especially for this kind of custom. I was coming in from the studio and I, and I had the shoes on my little side table underneath the um, little overhang and then I walked over here and the rain started to like get onto the shoes and it's creating this really cool weathered effect, which is what I really wanted. So I want to leave them out in the rain for like 30 minutes maybe and I'm going to come back and check on them and see how they're doing. It might be cool, it might not be, but we'll see. So that didn't go quite to plan. It ended up being purple, which is not what I was expecting. But um, the texture looks really cool. It's just the wrong colour. I'm literally loving how this is looking. Like I'm, I didn't expect it to come out this way. You see it's kind of like dripping down in areas, like this wash is kind of collecting in areas, it's really starting to look a hey, purple coming through, there's bits of reds, in some areas here there's a little bit of green tinge. So actually that the fact that dye didn't really work how I wanted it to is actually turned out a lot better. There's so much more depth in this than there was in the mock-up that I created, which was just mostly grey. The longer I leave it, the more it seems to just kind of drip down. A few parcels came over the last couple of days with things that I'm hoping are gonna be the right fit for my little project. First off, got some mini vinyl for what I'm gonna be doing for the front of the show. That scale looks quite good to me. I d I'm just not sure I've got enough, but the thing is they only had six left in stock and all the other sizes I could find were like too big. These ones are just from Amazon. I found some on Etsy, but it's gonna take a long time to get here. Then my next package. Okay, right, so this one, Oh, sorry, Arch, back to me. I ordered some like some type of thick hard material that I needed. That looks quite good actually. And then I got some, oh yeah, this is perfect. Slightly bigger and thicker one. Okay, perfect. So today's game plan is they're still looking very purple for some reason. And I think it's probably because I didn't let the dye completely set and like sink into the leather. But it's been two days and I haven't touched them. So I'm hoping it might work a bit better now. So I'm gonna airbrush some either green or yellow. It's just climbing all over me. And hopefully that neutralizes the purple just a bit more. Cause it's just, it's, if it was a tint of purple, I wouldn't mind, but this is literally purple at the moment. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna start plotting out whereabouts I want this little door to go find the best way it's like size up so it's the same size so i'm actually thinking it's a good idea to take this off i'm just thinking where that pipe's gonna go and i need some extra layers gonna be on top of this or do i stick it down oh can make it a lot harder for this bit if i leave it there yeah i think it has to be done I'm actually really happy with that choice because now this is way more of a flat surface. This was gonna just get in the way if I had it there. It's not adding anything, so. 
Now, the reason I'm adding a door and this door specifically is because it's a reference to Straight Out of Compton and NWA's real life when they had their first concert at Skateland. Um, and I can just insert a quick picture of it here so you can get the reference. But my plan is to install a red neon light that goes underneath the crack of the door so some of the light comes through. So it looks like there's a concert going on as you're looking at the shoe. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm trying to keep this piece in one piece because then I'm going to use it as the reference to cut out the actual door. That'd be so satisfying. That is beautiful. So originally I was going to do two layers. I have this one as like kind of the base layer and then stick this one on top and have the holes cut through to get some depth for the windows. But it's just slightly too thick. I don't know, I don't think it was going to look very realistic. So I'm thinking I'm going to use the thicker grey board as my like back piece. And then have this on top that I'm going to cut the windows in. And this one I'm going to get a much nicer defined edge. These are kind of hard to cut. I need to get a metal ruler that's on my list. I'm going to order it tonight actually. Jeez, I, took, I literally just took it out of the plastic. And it's just smelling like, um, what's it? That's much better. I was thinking to put maybe like tracing paper, or I can't decide if I'm going to use acetate or tracing paper or something just to make it look like there's glass, but like hazy glass behind. Really happy with that. So there's going to be depth. This is going to be a blocked up window anyway, so I'm going to paint it the same colour as the door. And this one I need to cut all the way through. I haven't glued it in yet. But this is the stage we're at and I also need to work out how I'm going to wire it. But I've noticed, I forgot I'm going to have a little kind of strip and I need to work out where the bottom of the door is going to be. So either I cut this higher or I trim the bottom of the door. To try and create a space where I can put this piece, I'm going to be cutting into it just to make this lower and then some of these so it'd be a little easier to stick it in. And then I need to try and figure out how I'm going to put this overhang on. It's because of the shape of the shoe, I'm wondering if I just cut like a slit and then slot it in. I think I'm going to be able to cut it exactly to the shape of this shoe. At this point, I started painting some of the thinner grey board to look like wood. I did end up making a horizontal cut in the side of the shoe to slot in the overhang and it ended up working quite well. Here's how the red neon light works. I soldered for the first time. I'm not going to do a close up because it's absolutely awful. As long as it sticks and I know it's like secure and then I'm going to cover it with electrical tape anyway. You're going to have to edge the door because the light's shining through where I don't want it to. Here I'm using some oven baked clay and I rolled it into really thin strips and then shaped it to the shape of some drain pipes. I used black clay this time around rather than white clay and it made the whole process much quicker for the painting. So I'm just spending a little bit of time trying to make these little layered parts, so all these wooden little boards. So I've done a little um, studio reset, just sorted stuff out. And I finally got this mat that's come and this cutting mat which would make my life a lot easier. It's getting a bit overwhelming with all the random stuff so I've sorted it out a little bit. I've got a little um, organisation bit where I've put all my little things that need to be added. So pretending that the shoe is a miniature building, I basically printed off all of the album covers to use as posters and then included graffiti lyrics. We're on to my favourite part of this whole project. NWA's music was really controversial in its time. So there was a lot of pushback. And in the film, there's reference to when loads of their Straight Outta Compton albums were burnt. So at the front of the shoe, I've created this kind of molten mess of all their album covers that have been burnt and trodden on. And I even added some highlights of red and yellow to try and make it look realistic as though they were still burning. It came out so much better than I imagined, especially because the miniature vinyls that I bought off Amazon were plastic. So when I put the flame to it, they melted really well. Okay, so it's next day now. Um, I'm really happy with how this has come out it's from yesterday, especially this area here. And then for my other shoe, I got all my base panels down. I need to age all these panels, like do a little, um, like a wash of maybe like black acrylic. This part's always so much fun because it starts to look so realistic compared to how it looked before. 
just aging everything up, adding some shadowing, making them look really worn and old. I couldn't decide what colour laces I wanted to go with, so I dyed two pairs so I could pick later. Now we're onto the fun part where I get to graffiti this base that I've just made. Everything on the shoe relates to NWA and their early career in some shape or form, and I wanted to make sure that all the portraits were included, so I tried to do them a little bit rougher than I usually would, so it looked a little bit more like graffiti. The way I work usually is I kind of block out my main mid-tones add the shadows and lights and then start adding in details it just makes the whole process a little bit quicker for me i didn't want you guys to get bored so i filmed one and a half portraits and the rest i did off camera just because it was taking me forever it was funny because ice cube's portrait went the easiest for some reason and maybe because it was a side profile and i wasn't as worried about getting the likeness as much but um it went way quicker so i tried to make some barred windows the other day and it just became a fat l so I went onto YouTube and then I found some really cool diorama makers and one guy recommended wall tape. So it's sticky on one side and it's got like these ridges. My plan is to cut along like a few of the horizontal ridges and then have it look like just the vertical ones are left. So for the laces, I ended up deciding to go with the ones that I dyed grey. I'm planning to try and do it in haphazard kind of way. So I'm going to kind of crisscross them about. But yeah, so I had the red ones and I thought the red ones were actually distracting from the look of the shoe. And then I'm also going to burn them slightly just to get some textures in there. I think that looks quite good. Because these are synthetic, they don't like catch fire they melt now i've got one more portrait left so this is the part i've been really anxious about is trying to get the door in the right place i really should have put this bit on afterwards but i know now better for next time okay i'm going back let's do it there was quite a bit of light leakage so i ended up edging the door i'm doing it with the light on just so i can see where exactly um the light shine through on the corners here's how it looks and i literally could not be any happier it worked so well so i've cut the hole i've put my little backing in that's gonna be the light behind this side of the shoe was looking a bit blank so i figured why not put another window in and then some of the red light can also come through we're nearing the end of this project finally um, the only things left are for me to make these police line do not cross things which is a reference to ice cubes lyric when i'm finished bring the yellow tape and then i've also got a few little signs to make to make the signs i used a similar method to the album covers that i used on the front of the shoe so i printed off all of the stuff that i needed and then stuck it onto grey board cut it out afterwards then i used lollipop sticks and then used that to stick onto the back I really want this bit here to burn, so... Imagine on the last step, all my lighters in my house seem to just run out of fluid at the same time. So I had to steal my mum's fancy matches to burn the stupid laces. When I made spray cans before, I used clay and tried to mould them and it was way too hard. So this time around, I cut up a little bit of the lollipop stick, poked a little bit of wire into it and then used painted masking tape for the cover. They came out way better and looked so much more realistic. The last reference that I absolutely had to include was the FBI letter that they received in regards to fuck the police. So I've just finished adding the last touches and I just wanted to show you guys a comparison. The um, little spray cans are made of clay and then I want to show you this one in comparison. And you see the little spray cans look way better on top. I mean, the first one was supposed to be a lot more grimy and um, like abandoned and way more graffitied. So there's that difference. But I can see myself remaking it quite differently if I was to do it again. There were so many challenges with this project. Um, I kind of cut out most of the struggle in because it was just so long and I didn't want to bore you guys a bit. 
So here are the final shots. Um, hopefully you guys like it. I'm so happy with them and hopefully the client likes them too. So one secret I've been keeping from you guys is that whilst I've been painting, I've been using a UV light or a black light to see how all the neons glow in the dark. And it looks so cool and now they're done, they look even better than I imagined. I'm so glad I made this extra effort just to add neons in certain places. And this is how it looks. Thank you so much for watching along as I create this project. It really means a lot to me, but please let me know what you think and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.